Hey guys, it's Alice. So today I'm going to show you how to remove Taurus from your photos. So this first one, you can see that there's a cyclist and I'm going to show you how to remove him using Photoshop. So I got two photos. This is a lovely Jenna and she sent this photo in for me to edit. So what I'm going to do is layer over the second photo because as you can see the right hand side, I can actually see that entire fence area. Um, there is another girl there, like another person, but I'm going to use that little bit of fence and kind of layer it over. So what I'm doing is cropping it using the crop tool um, and then I've got a feather setting on it so it's not cutting it as like a straight line, it's cutting it kind of soft. Um, and then I'm just going to crop that and you'll see that the edges of it are quite smooth and blend in pretty pretty easily. So then I'm going to change the opacity of it. <laughs> opacity? I don't know why I said it like that. Um, I'm changing the opacity and lining it up as best as I can. It won't perfectly line up because these photos did change like perspectives a little bit. They weren't taken immediately after one another. Um, so this will work if you do have like a series of images and you want to replace them but um, it'll be a lot easier if the camera hasn't moved in between them. So it just depends. I suppose if you plan ahead actually you could get this really right. Um, so now I'm just using the eraser tool to get rid of the extra edges around um, and I'm just going to try and blend it in and as I move you can see that I ended up uncovering that man with his little, he's got a spade in his hand, a spade and a bike, strange combination. So I've just kind of roughly blended that out and I suppose it looks alright to be honest, it looks kind of well proportioned and then I'm going to rub out that girl because we don't want any tourists in here and then obviously underneath that there's the man with his spade so I need to fix this so what I'm going to do is take the patch tool which is on the left hand side so in a second I'm going to go going to go gonna go up and drag that up here and it's going to patch it in so you can see that although there is a bit of a smudge on it it has got rid of most of the man's spade so what I'm going to do now is merge that top layer that I duplicated and just go straight to the background so you'll notice that I have two versions if you look down at the layers you'll notice that I've got two versions of this image I've got one below that's locked which is the original so I can't completely destroy it. I've got a copy of it just in case so I've got an identical copy on top. Make sure you do that because you don't want to edit an image and then not be able to get back to the original if you mess up. So yeah I've used the patch tool a few times and I'm gonna now blend in the various bits. As you can see there's a floating shadow <laughs> that I don't need anymore that's from that girl that I got rid of so I'm using the patch tool and just drawing around it and then I'm gonna drag it using the content aware button um, and just drag it to a similar spot. You'll see that I'm trying to line it up and I turned and I turned out and in the end I picked something a little bit further up to kind of line up the bolts on the bridge and the kind of yellow part on the other side. Um, and then I realized that I have a layer of uneven bolts. Can you see this? Like I feel like at first glance you probably wouldn't notice this but anyone who knows that this has been edited would see it so I am highlighting this and I'm just going to copy it over I'm just using the lasso tool for this um, and then it's got a bit of a jagged bold strong edge so I'm just going along with the eraser and kind of blending it in and then I obviously need to get rid of this bit of uh, extra <laughs> extra bolts whatever that is whatever you want to call it so I'm going to merge that down so that's one image again um, you don't have to merge them in between I just find it a lot easier and then I'm going to use the patch tool again and then drag that over and it'll identi identify it will duplicate whatever's next to it and there you go it's kind of blended it in and then I realized that there was a shadow of the girl on this post and now I was being very very picky I probably didn't need to do this either but um, I'm going to use the clone brush tool which works really really well so if I hold alt and click the top of the brush it will create like a mirror image of it so here I'm clicking alt and then it's going to pick up that colour and duplicate it further down. Um, it all takes trial and error this is probably not making much sense if you've not tried this before but honestly just try the tools out in Photoshop and you'll see that it kind of mirrors it. Um, and you'll get the gist of what it does. We use that tool and the patch tool quite a lot in these tutorials so it's important that you just try them out. 
so now I'm just patch tooling the rope um the rope is like a very rough edit I could have spent more time making this actually straight but once I zoomed out I feel like you can't really tell and I mean I can tell now because we've just zoomed in and checked it but yeah that's pretty much it um if I were to do it again I'd probably do something a little bit more with the C and make that blend in a bit more but I suppose if you weren't to know that this photo has been edited um you wouldn't realize realize so yeah that's that one done so now I'm going to go on to this one which has this guy next to them um and I think it's a photo in front of the Harry Potter Hogwarts castle in Florida. Very jealous. Um, so what I'm using is the clone brush tool. This was the tool I was mentioning earlier. And I'm picking up similar parts of the image. Um, you'll notice that a lot of these photos I've chosen have quite a bit of gap between the tourists and the background because it allows me to pick up various elements of the background without kind of disrupting everything. So basically I'm just copying, um, using the alt tool and clicking the clear bits of this fence and then going across. Again, trial and error because it sometimes doesn't line up just because of perspective and various different elements. But I'm going to click on the posts and kind of line those up. And you'll see I kind of do this bit by bit. I don't want to rush into it. Um, and I'll just basically paint him out um, and go step by step. Although the one bit that is the easiest is this this tree area um, because obviously it's quite blendable and you can't really tell which tree belongs to which. So I just clicked the most random parts and literally just got rid of his head. Um, it's like he's been put under the invisibility cloak from Harry Potter. <laughs> but yeah, you can see I'm lining up the posts of the floor. Um, this took a few attempts, to be honest. I undid it and started again, but you can see that it slowly gets rid of his feet and I'm just lining up the shadow with the floor that's there. And then anything that doesn't completely match, I will circle with the patch tool and line up with a different area. So you can see that I'm just picking up another bit. That bit was like a bit of an anomaly, so we kind of got rid of that. You will notice that a lot of the kind of shrubbery and trees and stuff behind the pillars on the left hand side is repeated um, and now if I did have a bit of extra time and if you were being very very precise you could have gone in and kind of adjusted them just like I did when I got rid of his kind of torso area you could pick it up from behind him and like fix that but to be honest I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> So now you'll see that I've got two repeated kind of knots in the wood. So I'm going to go back and get rid of his hand and I'm just using the patch tool, circling it and lining it up. And then I want this knot got rid of because it's very obvious that I've copied it. And then there's just a few little imperfections. So I'm just kind of playing around with it and getting rid of them. There's a few repeated areas that are very, very obvious that I've done that. I also realised that the top of this was very smudged. So I picked it up from another bit and kind of patched it in and it made it a bit more straight so yeah as you can see the bottom of that fence is a little bit wonky so let's hope previous Alice went in and fixed that I don't think I did by the looks of it but if I were to go in again I probably would but yeah that's the basic of it thank you to those of you who did send in these photos um to be edited I will send you them back so you've got the finished version but now I'm doing an Epcot one so I'm using the clone stamp tool again I've got the clone stamp options up and I'm clicking the reverse option so what this does is it means that a mouse um will move the other direction you'll see this in a second so i'm just kind of lining up where i think and, and you'll see that the big circle brush is moving to the right whereas the little cross thing that's picking it up is moving the opposite direction so it's kind of mirroring it and this works really really well for this one because obviously it's a mirror image and pretty much that was it like I just painted it the once I kind of lined up that bottom layer of the kind of curb again and then because there's so many patches on the floor it didn't really matter if it was repeated and that's it so yeah that reverse tool works really really well if you've got a mirror image of something and this final one was probably the most complicated one I've tried so it's not perfect but you will be able to see kind of the techniques that I used to kind of copy everything so again I'm using mainly the clone stamp tool and the patch tool as you can see i like them i'm using the reverse option again because the right hand side of this little panel is clear so i'm going to pick up the opposite so i'm clicking the top right corner and i'm copying it over to the top left 
lining it up drawing down and it's kind of picking up that other side and you'll see that it's starting to get rid of her face I think I do the same with the steps so I have turned off the mirror thing and I'm picking up the steps and drawing them across and I'm going to speed this up significantly but you'll see that that is a, basically the technique I used for the whole thing. It's a lot of trial and error. It's basically painting in and hoping for the best and pressing undo if you mess it up. Again, if you look down in the layers at the bottom right corner, you'll see that I have a copy of the background. So I do have the original image. If I do mess up somewhere, I can go back to that one. I was having a lot of trouble um, with the stairs on the back. Um, it was really really hard to get them to line up just because of this perspective of it so you'll see that towards the end I go back in and I kind of correct that um, and hopefully make it look a little bit better than it did so now I'm gonna use a different tool for the pair of legs and the backpack I'm using um, the what is it called content aware fill so I'm gonna use the lasso tool I'm going to outline the bit that I want Photoshop to look at and this is basically Photoshop's automated version. So in edit content aware fill you can click on this menu and Photoshop will do its very best job of trying to fill that area for you. Now as you can see the stairs are causing a problem. This um, setting works a lot better on something with more of a smooth background so maybe like trees or shrubs or whatever because it's easier to blend whereas these steps obviously it's quite important that they're straight so what I'm going to do now is go back in and pick an area of steps that is pretty much straight and I'm copying it and pasting it over the different area so you'll see I dragged it over I'm going to line it up and I do still have that feather option on my select tool so it's not a solid line when it copies over but yeah if you are going to give this technique a go on your photos I'd love to see the outcome your befores and afters um, either upload it to Instagram and use the hashtag on screen or tweet me the photo with the hashtag and I'd love to check them out because I find it very fascinating seeing the before and afters um, and again it doesn't matter if it's perfect because I don't think this photo in particular is perfect but um, it does the job and from a distance I don't think it looks too shabby so yeah as you can see I'm still fixing the stairs um, honestly they gave me so much headache it took me a while to get the stairs done um, and then I went to go I went to go I decided to go to town and get rid of even these people at the top so just picking up various bits of the fence getting rid of the heads getting rid of all these little people how dare you be in my photo and there we go we have a completely transformed image um, I love clicking back on the people and seeing the difference and I think it's amazing I'm pretty impressed with myself but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video hopefully you learnt some things and hopefully you can apply it to your tourist photos thanks so much for watching don't forget to subscribe if you like these kind of videos let me know if you would like to see more any suggestions are always welcome and I'll see you soon bye